Well, hello again, my friend. Welcome to this episode of Stirred Up, a Christian source of encouragement for all believers to live our lives for Jesus Christ, to live our lives in obedience to God's word, and to stir one another up to love and good works on behalf of Jesus Christ because of who he is and what he's done for us. He has done the work none of us could ever have done for ourselves in order to save us, and he has given us his righteousness, which is why we have such a blessed assurance. All those things are truths found in God's word, and God's word is so very, very important to believers. All scripture is breathed out by God. It is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness. You want to be a mature and complete Christian, you must be in God's word. And God's word is inerrant and all-sufficient and unchanging, just like God himself is. And since God is the one who breathed out his word, it makes sense that his word is just like he is. This is why uh, we make sure that, like we read in 2 Timothy 2.15, to do ourselves well by presenting ourselves to God as one approved, a worker who is not ashamed of being able to rightly handle the word of truth. And God's word is truth. We see God's word being questioned, though, all the time in the world around us. Perhaps one of your best friends or your family members, maybe one of your coworkers or neighbors, is constantly tempting you to not put your trust in God's word or to question it. Uh, this has been going on since the very beginning in the garden. We read in Genesis 3 where Satan was tempting Eve when he said, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. You see how subtle Satan is. This is the, the subtlety of evil. He is just called into question God's honesty, God's integrity. He has called God a liar in that simple statement. You will not surely got, die. He calls God's into question by saying, did God actually say? And then tells Eve that God is a liar by refuting what God said, by saying, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. What Satan first did in the garden there, he continues to do today as well as our sinful flesh does this too, to cast doubt about God, to cast doubt about God's word, and to tempt us with something that looks good, even if God forbids it. One of the best hymns that we can sing is one that really reminds us of how wonderful God's word is. A hymn that is one of the old favorites how firm a foundation.
God's Word is the firm foundation that every believer can build their life upon. Jesus said in Matthew 7 that it's a wise man who hears his word and does it. It's like a wise man who builds their house upon a rock. Are you doing that? Are you building your life upon the firm foundation rock of Jesus Christ and his word? After all, Psalm 119 says that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So God's word is how he reveals himself to us. It's how he shows us the way we are to live. He tells us right from wrong. It's his wisdom revealed to us. Are you living your life that way? There's a simple way to find out. Ask yourself this question. Do you do this? Do you, every time you have a question or need direction or any time you're going through anything, do you ask this question? Do you say, what does God's word say? Tough question, isn't it? If you're being honest with yourself, it's a tough question. Are you measuring? Are you filtering everything in your life through what God's word says? That's what we're called to do as believers. And if we believe that God's word is true, that it is inerrant, that it is all sufficient and it is unchanging, that it is the very word of God revealed to us, then we should listen to what God's word says and we should trust it and not doubt. After all, you'll take a prescription from a doctor that you haven't verified, you don't know much about them, and you'll go to a pharmacy You'll get that prescription filled by a pharmacist who's verified not verified by you, whose uh, background you don't know. But you'll take that prescription, you'll go home, and you'll take those pills. All because you trust. Now, if you can trust a doctor and a pharmacist, certainly you can trust the one true Lord, holy God of the universe, maker of heaven and earth. I encourage you to do that today, to trust him and to trust his word. If you need help in understanding his word or growing in his word, we have Bible studies that we upload on our YouTube channel weekly. Uh, you can also write in with any questions you might have about the Bible or any questions you might have about current events or something that you're going through wanting to know, hey, what does the Bible say about this? Or does the Bible say anything about this? You can also write in with uh, any requests that you might have for hymns or anything else. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. It's great encouragement. Uh, you can contact us through the different mediums that this show appears on, or you can find our website, which is simply rfcdover.com. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. And we thank you for your word, your word that has revealed yourself to us. We ask that you would help us be people of your word, that you would help us to grow in your word, to give us wisdom in your word. You say in James 1.5 that if we lack wisdom, we just need to ask for it and you'll give it freely. So pre please give us through the power and presence of your Holy Spirit wisdom and understanding of your word. Help us to hear it and also put it into practice and be doers of your word. And help us, Lord, to rightly handle your word and take every part of our life and filter it through it so that we might live lives that are pleasing to you. For we seek to please you and be obedient to you and find our joy in that obedience. And we want to do things your way, but we need your help. So please help us. And for everything that we might be facing this day, Equip us with the strength and the courage and anything else we might need to be able to represent you well. For we love you and we want to serve you and we thank you for all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a Christ-filled day and we'll see you next time on Stirred Up.